Hi guys, I thought that I would finally get around to doing my labour and induction story. Um, <laughs> it's only, you know, almost two weeks late, but that's okay, because um, I'm doing it now. I'm really sick, and that's why I look and sound like fresh hell, but I may as well do it now, and I'm trying not to wake my daughter up. Um, her name's Alora Beth Cavallo. Um, she was born on the 15th of August, eight pound four, which is pretty good. Um, it was an induction cause I was 41 and three, I believe. I'm pretty sure it was 41 and, I don't know, it was, yeah. So I was admitted to the hospital on the Tuesday and that was at three o'clock and then by five o'clock, um, I'd already had a sweep done on the Monday. Nothing had happened. I was barely dilated and effaced. Like, it was pathetic. <laughs> it wasn't... Nothing was happening. Um, so that's why I was having an induction. So they did the membrane sweep on the Monday, and nothing happened. I had a membrane sweep the following Monday as well. Oh, no, sorry. They tried a membrane sweep when I was 40 weeks, and they couldn't even get a finger like near it because it was so up towards my back and it was just a mess. Um, that didn't hurt. The membrane sweep that I had on the 13th didn't hurt. Um, and so I went into hospital. I was admitted at 3 p.m. 5 p.m. they put the tape in, which I think is called Cervidil or something. Um, I would tried looking up for stories about Cervidil inductions and whatnot and I hadn't really found much. So forgive me if I'm wrong with the, that name, but I'm pretty sure it's right. Anyway, they put the tape in. That was very unpleasant. It it hurt quite a bit. Um, I was only like two centimeters dilated by this stage, um, barely two centimeters dilated. And so they'd put the tape in and that, like, it hurt a lot. Um... But when she was finished, that was fine. She So she put the tape in at 5 o'clock p.m. Um, and that was that, really. Uh, my partner stayed with me until about 8 o'clock p.m. There wasn't much happening. It was pretty boring. Um, I was in a room with a lady who had had C-section. She was in a lot of pain. And her baby kept on crying. And she had to keep calling the nurses to come and help her do things. Um... So I was listening to that and I felt really awful for her. So <laughs> don't, um, yeah, don't get a C-section unless you have to because that sounded really, really painful. Anyway, so 5 p.m. I had the tape put in. Nat went home around 8 p.m. Um, nurses were coming in and checking me and doing my blood pressure and whatnot and they were saying that I was having contractions but I couldn't feel them. Um, around 10 o'clock I started being able to feel them. By 2 a.m., um, I was in a lot of pain, and I asked, hello, <laughs> Mickey, he's been outside for a few days, because he doesn't like the baby, so he, I think he's a little bit happy to be inside, and I think he's a bit hungry, I'm um, sorry, so 2 a.m., um, I called the nurse, and I asked her if she could do something for the pain, and so she said that she was going to check me, right? And I'm like, okay, that's fine, because I thought, you know, she'd just been doing what the other doctors had been doing, and it wasn't a big deal. <sighs> she pulled my mucus plug out. Like, it hurt so much. It was like a sweep, but she was, like, reaching around and, like, pulled it out. And I remember looking down and her glove was covered in blood and I asked her if I needed to put a pad on and she's like, oh no, you'll be fine, just go to the toilet. And so I went to the toilet and there was so much blood and like more plug. Uh, it was horrible. And so I had to call her back half an hour later because I was having pretty frequent contractions, um, like a minute apart now lasting for like two minutes. Um, I was timing them on the app on my phone. <laughs> And I was in a lot of pain. Well, what I thought was a lot of pain. <laughs> um, and so she gave me a morphine shot. This was about 2, 2 a.m., 3, no, yeah, between 2 and 3 a.m. 
Um, and so I was awake the whole night. I slept for maybe half an hour, 45 minutes the whole night. Um, I'd had dinner at like six o'clock, five thirty, six o'clock that night. And then being awake all night with contractions. Then an, the nurse came in at five thirty and told me to pack up my things. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? And she's like, you're going over to the birth suite. And so I went over to birth suite and had my waters broken. So I had to call my boyfriend and tell him what was happening. He didn't make it in time for him to be there while the waters broke. But he made it for the comforting afterwards. Like, it wasn't painful. Um, having my waters broken wasn't painful at all. Um, I was expecting them to break it and then it'd be agony and contraction straight away and pushing and it wasn't anything like what I thought it was. Um, I got up on the table and they put the plastic hook in me and broke my waters and I felt it go everywhere. Um, they cleaned it up really quickly. It didn't go all over the floor or anything. It just soaked into the pads that were on the bed and that was that and so I sat there for a few hours not dilating not doing anything um I was having contractions that I couldn't feel um apparently <laughs> um and that was that so it was all pretty boring until about three o'clock p.m so the three o'clock on the Wednesday after no sleep and no food all day they thought it'd be a good idea to hook me up to the Syntocin, which is also known as Pitocin, or it's a synthetic form of oxytocin. So it's the IV version that makes you contract, and I really didn't want it, but I was only, I wasn't even four or five centimetres by this stage, and I had been, like, labouring all day, basically, um, and I was getting nowhere. Uh, mind you, by this stage, I was having contractions, and they were painful, um, don't get me wrong, like, it wasn't fun, but it was manageable. Like, I was handling it by myself. Um, I tried the gas in the beginning, but all that did was dry my mouth out and make me vomit, really. Like, it, it, I wouldn't go the gas again. It's better just going naturally. Um, so they hooked me up to the Syntocin, Pitocin, Synthetic Oxytocin, whatever. It was horrible absolutely horrible and because my waters had been broken I couldn't get in the bath I couldn't get in the shower and it was so hard and so quick and just oh my god it was so painful um so I did that for a few hours naturally um I had a great student midwife with me she was heating up the heat hot packs and putting it on my back and putting my belly and my partner was fantastic like he was massaging my back and trying to make me feel better um I originally I was all for um sorry let me close my nose this is really gross but I'm not like recording this again because I've already done it like three or four times <laughs> so I'm sorry um uh, yeah, what was I saying? I had a fantastic student midwife and my partner and her were just amazing um, with the heat packs and the rubbing and the massages and they tried um, like scented oils and scented candles and stuff. Um, and so I made it until I did two hours laboring like that. Um, naturally, I tried changing positions because originally I was all for helping, um, like having gravity assist with the labor and so I got on my hands and knees and I tried the leaning up against the back of the bed um <laughs> that just made the pain so much worse um I think I was back to back with her at this stage so it was a very painful laboring process and it just got to the point where I really just wanted to either stop my options were in my head that I could stop the Pitocin and do it myself or have an epidural and keep going with the Pitocin and I was begging them and pleading them to stop me on the IV and they wouldn't do it. Um, obviously they, they wouldn't do it. So I had an epidural which was fine um, except for it didn't work. 
and so whenever they touched me I would have another contraction and it would be very strong and very painful and they'd have to stop what they were doing I had a contraction while the needle was in my back um, and that was very unpleasant um, I think I had a few contractions I, but I was so tired that I don't even remember um, majority of like what was going on really it's just like even now looking back on it it's just so blurry because I was absolutely exhausted um, it got to a point before I had the first epidural that I was vomiting so hard from the pain that I was wetting myself and so I asked to have a catheter put in because the straining of my vomit from the pain from the contractions from the Pitocin um, was making me wet myself and that obviously wasn't pleasant when I'm here on the bed um, which I'd been in since I broke my waters like I, I hadn't gotten off the bed like I'd changed positions on it but I hadn't gotten off of it so I'd had like the amniotic fluid all over me I'd wet myself several times it was just ugh. Um, so the first epidural um, I thought it was working because the contraction started dying down at first and I felt my left leg go really funny and so he left the anesthesiologist or whatever he left because um, we thought that I was fine <laughs> and that lasted maybe five minutes and then I had complete feeling back again and the contractions were bad and it didn't work um, and because they were so busy that night um, this is about six o'clock by now. They were so busy that there there were more women having babies that needed epidurals than people who could administer them. Um, so I had a second epidural around. It would have been about six o'clock, six thirty. I had a second one. Mind you, I've been in pain, like excruciating pain since three since they put the drip in. Um, and so he came and he did it again. Um, this was another doctor. He came and he gave me another epidural and he said that if it didn't work this time that my body just isn't able to have it. Like I'm built a specific way that I can't have epidurals, which is great. <laughs> so I put it in again. Um, but the thing with the epidurals is you have to bend over and it's like a crunch sound. Um, they crunch into your back and it sounds so morbid and horrific um, because you think it's the needle in your bone like not only can you feel the vibration but you can hear it like it's oh but you don't care really because you're in so much pain you're just like yep 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 hit me up do it okay good um, <laughs> that was basically the disclaimer that's how the disclaimer went as well um, <laughs> He was trying to tell me all the warnings and all the dangers that could happen. I'm like, yep, 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 yep. And then I'd have a contraction. Yep, yep, yep. Had another contraction. I really didn't care. He could have told me he was going to cut my legs off. I didn't care. Um, but anyway, so I had the second epidural that um, I still had complete feeling in my legs um, and like in my lower half. It just made it really heavy. Um, like it, it altered the sensation. So I could still move my legs and I could still move my toes. I just couldn't lift them. Um, and so they checked me around seven o'clock and she went to do an internal and she's like, Oh, the baby's head's there. Um, so she gave me half an hour. The option was half an hour cause I'd been laboring all day and all night. Um, they gave me half an hour to push her out by myself or they were going to cut me and do an episiotomy and use a vacuum and get her out. Um, cause it was nearing the, like the risk of infection because my waters had been open for so long and whatnot. So I had 30 minutes to push her out. I did it in 33. <laughs> they couldn't believe how quickly I just like got her out. And amazingly, I didn't tear. Um, they thought I had a second degree tear internally, but I sat on an ice pad for like an hour and it went away. Um... And I had two grazes on the outside, which hurt more than the second degree tear. I didn't even feel that one. Um, but, like, going to the toilet doing wheeze, oh, it burnt so bad. Um, and, like, when I, get off, when I got off the table after she was born to go have my shower, 
um, the weight adjustment, like that's 10 plus kilos that you're losing from the placenta and the fluid and the baby. It, it's, it's really, really bizarre. Um, I had to get help. It wasn't from the epidural because they didn't work. I had to get help walking just because, you know, you're used to this big belly being there and it's just nothing. It, it was, it was really weird. Um, but I had my shower and then, um, they checked her for everything and, like, the hospital was really, really good, and so it was about 11 o'clock when we walked over and went into the maternity ward area, and I stayed there that night, and then the next day, the visitors came and harassed me, and I couldn't handle it anymore, um, and, like, I still hadn't slept because I was so worried about her not breathing, and just, I'm still like that now, I can't, it's horrible, I'm such a paranoid first-time mother, um, but I left before six o'clock on the when on the Thursday night. So I wasn't even in the hospital twenty four hours and I was out of there because I, I just couldn't handle it. So I brought her home and ta da <laughs> Um but yeah, if you are going to be induced don't be induced. <laughs> Seriously, just try everything. That was horrible. It was just... I could... I, I seriously think I could have done it by myself if they hadn't of... Like, I could have done it naturally if they didn't use the IV. Because um, I think I was doing really well labouring um, naturally and doing everything naturally. Um, oh, that's another thing. Because the contractions were so hard and so fast, um, the cord was wrapped around her in the shape of a sachet, like, you know how they have sachets across the chest, that's what her cord was, it was across her chest and under an arm, um, and so with every contraction towards the end, her heartbeat would almost stop for a little bit, um, and because she was getting distressed, that's another reason why they gave me half an hour to push her out, because of the, the distress that she was under, also because they couldn't feel her heartbeat through my tummy, um, they put in this thing, um, like a microphone, well, not a microphone, but like a heartbeat monitor, um, through my vagina and through my cervix and attached it to the top of her head. I've never heard of that before. So she had a little sore on the back of her head when she came out from them attaching the heart rate monitor, which was <laughs> yay for science. But, um, so yeah, um, I had problems getting her to latch um, at the hospital, so I was expressing and syringe feeding her, um, but that, like, it worked itself out, I just, I just learnt to cooperate with her, and, because my right nipple's different to my left nipple, it's, it was hard for her to kind of tell the difference and learn what was what in the beginning, but now, you know, breastfeeding, we still have our moments. Um, I'm learning as she gets older. She's almost two weeks. It's been a steady progression of her stomach maturing. And so now the latest thing is that she will sit there and gorge herself until she vomits milk out of her nose. Um, so I have to try and police the intake a little bit. Um, stopping her when I feel that she's had too much and then I'll burp her and make sure that she's fine and she's still hungry then I'll give her some more and the process will continue um I really don't want to wake her up but I'll move the ta -da, it's Allura she was 8 pound 4 and 53 centimeters when she was born Yeah, she's very, very cute. And she's very loved. Very, very, very loved. Um, so, yeah. I'm sorry this is so late. If you have any questions about induction um, or the procedures, the policies, the things involved, just comment um, and I'll reply because I check my YouTube. I just don't update it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that was my labour and delivery story for Ipswich Hospital. I think she's waking up. <laughs> for Ipswich Hospital, um, in Queensland. So because I'm getting sick, I'm worried she's getting sick, so I'm going to go get something to eat and go to bed. Bye.